Hi, my name is David Wandless. I'm one of the trainers for the Accountants Division within Sage. Now, when people think about RTI, they traditionally think about the one submission type which you make every time you pay your staff. RTI is actually much wider than that. RTI is made up of five separate submission types. Sounds a lot, sounds like it complicates things, but to be honest, it is actually quite streamlined and quite smooth within our software. The first of the submission types is the employer alignment submission. Now this is a one-off, it is done company by company, and when you submit this, it is telling the HMRC what your starting point for RTI is. It submits a full list of all employees who have been employed in that financial year, whether they are leavers or whether they are still current employees, and it will submit their names, dates of birth, basic details such as address and so on, and it is this information which HMRC will then use to match against their existing records. One important point on this, because P38As are going to be phased out, they will no longer exist under RTI, all employees who are receiving money through that business at any point in the year, including if they would previously only have been on a P38A, must be included. Now, we understand this can be a significant change in certain circumstances, and rather than having, say, a dozen employees, you may double or even more the number of employees that will be classed as employed. Now, with that in, in mind, you must also make sure that all directors are added, that anybody who is taking money at any point from that business through the payroll system are included. You must submit this on the date that the HMRC has given for the go live for RTI. And while we accept that may be a problem, we have gone back to HMRC asking if there is likely to be any softening of that approach to make it within a specific date range. Because if, for example, it's a one-man person who's running the payroll and that person's on holiday for two or three weeks around that time, how would that be handled? There are some ongoing questions they have been raised with HMRC and we are awaiting clarification of that. The second submission type is the full payment submission, the FPS. Now, when people think of RTI, this is the one that they think of. This is the submission that you will be making each time you run your payrolls. Now, a couple of things on that. It submits a lot of information, so it's not just one or two fields. It is submitting a lot of information with regards to each person. So including what they're getting paid in that period, the gross pay, net pay, tax, national insurance, student loans, but also a full range of year to date values as well. It is going to be possible to do RTI through the government software, through the government gateway. However, if you do it manually through the gateway, bear in mind there will be a lot of information person by person every time they get paid, which would need to be input. One other thing, which could also impact on how you run your payrolls. If an employee is employed by that company, but is not receiving money in that period for whatever reason, whether that be they are on holiday, extended holiday, they may be students who are only working at certain parts of the year, you must have any employees who are still classed as employed on hold. Previously, we've seen three traditional ways of dealing with employees in that scenario. They either do go on hold, which would be the correct way. They are paid zero gross pay. That in future will no longer be acceptable to HMRC and it will be an automatic trigger for a compliance visit. And the third way is you basically just deselect them from your list, you ignore them. Now, HMRC have stated that if you do not subsequently submit a person for 12 consecutive weeks or for three months, they will close that employee's record within that business. They will make the assumption that person is a lever. Therefore, going forward, the only way to deal with employees in that scenario is to have them on hold and submit them in that way. What will happen with the information that is submitted is the HMRC will use the submitted information to calculate what that company owes at the end of their payment period. So whether that is monthly, 
quarterly or annually, depending on what has previously been agreed with the HMRC for that business. There will be a way around this, and that will be the next submission. But the important thing to note here, the submission of information must be made on or before the date the employee is paid. Effectively, think about the money. This all has to take place before the money changes hands. And this has been a big bone of contention for a lot of employers. We know that. But this is the one area that HMRC is not going to soften their approach on. They must know the information before the money changes hands. The third submission type is the employer payment submission, the EPS. First important point, not everybody would be making these every time. Let's say, for example, you have a quarterly agreement with the HMRC for this particular business. If over the course of the previous submissions, it transpires they owe the HMRC £5,000, as long as that full £5,000 is being made to the HMRC, there would be no need to submit an EPS in that scenario. The only time you would use an EPS is if you need to account for a difference in the figures that the company is planning to pay the HMRC. And there are obviously quite a number of reasons why that might be. Some of those would include sick pay recovery, so that would reduce the liability owed. Maternity pay, paternity pay may be being recovered, similar effect. Or CIS deductions may change. Now, all of those are able to be submitted through this EPS, and that basically tells HMRC that the money they are expecting to get is going to reduce for a legitimate reason. One important point under RTI, not having the money available to make a payment is no longer a valid option. Previously, when you got to your end of year, as long as HMRC had received the full 12 months payment, that was adequate. No longer, it's all about the cash flow for the HMRC. Payments must be made in accordance with the payment agreement you have with HMRC. If that's monthly, they expect full payment on a monthly basis. If it's quarterly, similarly every quarter, and so on. The fourth submission type is the National Insurance Verification, the NVR. Now this submission type can be made at any point it can be done employee by employee, so if you do have one that you wish to query with HMRC, you could do so. Or you could do it for a batch of employees. And what Sage is recommending is when you first start using RTI, it might be a good idea to submit all of your existing employees for an NVR. This places the emphasis on HMRC confirming the information that they have. They will then return with one of three scenarios. Yes, you have the correct information for the national insurance number, continue to use it. No, you don't, but this is the one that we want you to now use for that employee. Or the third option would be, we don't know, we don't have a national insurance for, number for that person. Leave that field blank and we will be changing the validation in our software to allow that. And HMRC will investigate that further and subsequently send through a national insurance number when one is available. Now, with that in mind, the notifications will come through your existing mailbox and you will then need to apply those once they are received. The fifth and final submission type is the earlier year update, the EYU. Now, at the present time, we have very limited knowledge of what this will look like. It's the one submission type which is not yet set up within our software at the time of this video. The reason for that is HMRC hasn't fully finalized exactly what they want that to look like. We know in general this will be a way of amending figures which you have previously submitted to HMRC for a previous year, but exactly what that looks like we'll let you know in due course. As you can see there are five submission types, one of which you make on the date you are given by HMRC. That is the first submission that they will receive from you. Previously, the idea was this would only be done for larger companies, 250 employees or more. That has changed. All companies will now be required to make that submission. From that, they will then validate the data. And then on all payments made on or after that date, you would then need to do the second type of submission. 
The third submission type would only happen if you're not planning on making the full payment HMRC is expecting from you. If you do have a quarterly model in place, you would only do that on a quarterly basis. If you have an annual agreement with them, for example, you would only be making that at that time. The fourth submission type, the national insurance verification, can be done at any point. It can be done for individuals or it can be done for groups and Sage is recommending we do it for groups. And the final submission type, the earlier year update, um, we know very little about at this point. Um, once we know more, we will actually update you on this also. But from what we've been told, it is to change figures from a prior year.